Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, November 4th. Today's topic is Snapping for Learning, Book Snaps and Gratitude Snaps with Tara Martin. Your show moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. I'm going to turn the mic over to Susie, who will now introduce Tara and ask her the newbie question. Wow, it's, it's such a pleasure to have Tara here today. She is a great example of an educator who's taken an idea that has gone viral and it continues to grow. Uh, she is an enthusiastic educator, speaker, and author who thrives on change. You're going to see that. And refuses to settle for the status quo. Her mission is to invigorate administrators, teachers, and staff members to apply instructional and leadership practices that foster creativity and empower all 21st century learners, adults and students, we're all 21st century learners, to lead with passion. And you may have seen the hashtag Snapchat, or books chat, and she's going to tell us how that started. And she has detailed slides to help us learn. So without further ado, Tara, we will ask you the newbie question. What is Snapchat, and how is it being used by educators? Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. I am honored to be here today in Classroom 2.0 Live. Um, Snapchat is an app that teenagers absolutely love. I have a 16-year-old son who I see him taking selfies more than I see him face-to-face. -face. Um, and I was really just going bonkers with the app. It was driving me crazy. And I told my husband, I said, you know, we need to get that app off his phone. Um, he spends more time on that than he does face-to-face -face talking to anyone. But um, as with anything, I try to find what kids love and find a way to use that for what I call edu-awesomeness or <laughs> learning, right? And so I love to read and highlight and annotate in my books, and I do it all the time. I'm constantly reading. And I said, you know, I think... I think I might try to use Snapchat as a digital highlighter. So I called Caleb downstairs and I said, bud, come see, um, come teach me how to use Snapchat. And he's like, no, no, mom, you have to be crazy. Like, adults aren't supposed to hang out on this, this app. This is for kids, you know? But he did. He came down. He's the best Snapchat teacher ever. And I said, buddy, when I read this piece of the text, the imagery that's happening in my mind, this is what I see. And I want to use your language. I want to use bitmojis and emojis to share my imagery with the world on this on this uh, visual digital representation of what I'm thinking. And I want to annotate. And I want to say the quote in the author in the book. And he's like, Mom, this is crazy, but I'll show you how to do what I think you want to do. So he taught me. And, and that's how I came up with I just created one. And I put it out on Twitter. And I literally haphazardly just gave it a title, hashtag the book snap, which is super, I didn't think about it. I didn't even think about the science behind anything I was doing. I was trying to find the app to use it for something good, so I didn't take it off my son's phone. So it really didn't have a lot of forethought into putting book snaps out there. And so since then, how is Snapchat being used by educators? Well, now educators are looking at this app, this language that students love, and figuring out a way to use it for edu-awesomeness. Because guess what? They're using it in class anyway underneath their desk. Um, you may not see it, but I, tell you how, I can tell you how many hours my son spends on Snapchat a day. And there's no way he could do that outside of the school day. So why not try to incorporate it into what we're doing already, especially for these older kids? But what happened with this is... Um, you know, the littles don't have access to Snapchat, nor do they even care about it. You know, they're elementary kids, these little bitty people. And so I wanted to figure out a way to create this, this digital visual representation of reading and get a love for reading for the little people. And so I just started figuring out all the different apps that you could use to create book snaps so I had access for everyone. So today I'm going to share with you another way to use book snaps. It's not with Snapchat. However, you can go to my website, and I'll show you that later. You can find all the Snapchat edu awesomeness you might want to find. But today I'm going to show you with a different app how to create book snaps and get the same results 
that we get when we use Snapchat. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you. Okay. So today I'm going to show you how to change, create book snaps with Google Slides. Every, like, just about every school has access to Google Apps, right? So this is one way that you can, you can use this strategy that actually engages both hemispheres of the brain. So you're not just reading and comprehending. You are recreating the imagery happening in, happening in your mind, which is engaging the left and the right hemisphere of your brain, which ideally increases comprehension. So today I'm going to show you with Google Slides. Google Drawing and Google Slides work the same. I like Google Slides, and I'll tell you why. So the first thing you would do is just open your Google Apps, and you go to Google Slides. And at this point, you are going to assign every student a slide. And if you need to create a bunch of slides, you just do Control-D, and it'll duplicate, duplicate the slide that you want all the way down. So if I have 30 students, I need 30 slides. And that's what I do first. Now, when you do this with real live kids, because I'm in the district office now, so when I go out and I teach this to classes, I always give them a little digital citizenship pitch. Like, I'm expecting you to be the best digital citizens ever. That means you are going to find your number, whatever their classroom number is. You know, every kid has a number. So if you're number two, you are going to go to slide two and put your name across that slide. And you really have to encourage them not to go on each other's slides because this is where it gets a little tricky. However, done well, this is the, this is, I love this way of presenting and creating book snaps. So if they're all reading the same novel or if they're all reading something different, this is a great way to share this link to the slideshow in your Google Classroom or in your whatever platform you use or just a tiny URL written on the board. Everybody gets in, they choose their slides, and their job is to create a book snap on what they're reading for that week. Maybe this is done during stations. It could be done at many times during the day, however you choose to use it. But their slide is their number, and they need to create a book snap. And how they're going to do that, I'm going to show you. The first thing they want to do is go to Insert Image. When you go to Insert Image, you will get a slide that pops up like this. Take a snapshot. Kids love this. They can either create um, a snapshot of many different things. I'm going to show you. The first thing, though, you will get a couple of pop-up boxes the very first time you do this. Don't, don't be alarmed. Just click Allow, Allow again. And sometimes you have to back all the way out of it and do Insert Image again. But once you do this once, it's OK. But you do kind of have to walk children through this the first time. I always take a snapshot of the cover of the book. Two reasons. I always express to students, we have to be sure to give credit to the author and the title of whatever we're reading. And the easiest way to do that is promote their book. Authors love this, especially when you tweet these out and you tag the authors at the end. So I take a picture of the book. I don't worry about it being perfect because what I'm going to do is crop the image. And I kind of stick it off to the side. That's the first thing. The second piece is take a picture of the text that you're reading. As far as copyright, this is totally fine. You're not taking a huge chunk of their book. You're not selling it. It's just a tiny quote. It's just as if you made it a quote, a quote poster. So take a picture of the section that you're reading, crop it, and place it into your image. The next thing you want to do is add a text box. It's very important to teach students to annotate, not just pulling out the quote, but also sharing what they're thinking. But for this first part, we're going to share our quotes. And I love this when you're teaching students, because they're pulling out the quote, they're making sure they use the correct punctuation, their title, they're uh, crediting the author. They put it off to the side. You can decorate your text box. You can add arrows and insert shape to point out the key pieces of what you're wanting to say. You can paint your arrows. There's a lot of visual things you can do. So once you have your annotation and you have your point, you're pointing out your keywords, you may want to add an image. And this could be like emojis, um, Google images. The best thing about using Google Slides is the images are already um, labeled for commercial use. So you're not having to worry about uh, labeling or crediting the image. These that pull up are the ones that you can use for commercial use. 
So I usually go to search and type in. I was, um, I'm using a quote by Dave Burgess, we all have to find our own personal drum and then play it the best we can. So I typed in drummer hit. Then I found my picture, click select. You can resize it and then put it on your book snap. So you're showing the world what you're thinking through images and annotation thus far. However, I actually want to sh tell them what I'm thinking. I want to tell them what my drum is. I want to tell my teacher. I want to let her know what I'm thinking when I'm reading this piece. So I'm going to go to insert shape and then call out. And there's a little think bubble there. If you click the think bubble, you can resize it. You can also change its color and all kinds of things. I kept mine white. But if you double click within the think bubble, you can type. And so there is where I typed what I was thinking. My drum is teaching, leading, and writing. Those are my drums. That's what I love. That's my passion. I want my teacher to know that. And when I read this piece, this is what I was thinking. And um, I'm going to step back and take a second right here because listen to the book snaps. Students speak through book snaps. It's their language, it's something they love, and I am super passionate about this because I get a ton of emails and DMs all the time of teachers finding out things about their students they had no idea. So not only are they reading and connecting, they feel comfortable to share with you some information. So don't ignore these book snaps. Read them because you never know what a kid's going to share with you here, and you might be the person they need to reach out to them because of a book snap. So don't underestimate this, the power of this visual tool. Um, sorry, that's a little emotional, but we're going to keep going. If you want to do emojis, kids love emojis, and Google's a place where you can find some. You just go to insert image, and with the search bar all the way to the right, you are going to type in emoji. You could choose any kind of emoji. If you type in emoji and sad, it'll just give you a bunch of sad emojis. Emoji and happy, emoji excited. If you type in that and an emotion, you're going to get all kinds of things you can choose from. This is another point where you kind of have to do some digital citizenship um, chat. I often share with kids if they're little, um, treat it like an art museum. When you're walking through an art museum, there are times where you see statues that are undressed. They're naked. And you can either appreciate it or you, if you can't handle it, you just keep walking. And so I kind of teach them the same thing when I'm teaching them about looking through these pictures. For the most part, these pictures are super filtered. There are times where they come across something that may or may not be appropriate for school. I tell them just to scroll past it if they can't handle it. Like, if you don't think it's supposed to be in school, then it's not. Just keep going. So you kind of have to give them a little bit of a pep talk before that. So if you want to get, children love this piece. If you actually want to uh, change the background and make it colorful and make it more engaging, you can click in the white space of a Google slide, right click, and you can change its color. You can also choose an image underneath here to um, add as the background. Or you can go back to insert image, search, type in drum still talking about drums, you can find an image, take it and spread it across the entire slide, then arrange it to go to the back, set its transparency with image options all the way down so it looks like it's faded in, and then there you have like this interesting looking book snap. Kids, kids love the, the look of these, so I try to teach them all the different ways and let them just go crazy and be creative. Um, Bitmoji is a big piece that a lot of people love with book snaps. If you want to add Bitmoji, there's a Bitmoji extension for Google Chrome. You just go to Chrome extensions, type in Bitmoji, add a screen, and you can add it to the top of your computer. It'll, it'll, it'll hang out at the top. It's a little green square. When you want to add a Bitmoji, you do the same as you did with the search pictures. You're just going to type in the emotion that you're thinking, or you can scroll through every single one of them. Honestly, Bitmoji and me are BFFs, so I usually just type in the emotion because I know exactly which one I'm looking for. And then you slide it in. It's that easy. You grab it from this extension, and you literally just grab and slide it into your slides. Bitmoji extension and Google Chrome and Google Slides um, are, are good friends. They, they play nice together, so it's easy just to drag it in. 
So then when you have your book snap the way that you like it, you're ready to, to turn it in or to show your teacher you're good, you're through creating. That is, um, then you want to leave it into your slideshow like this. I want to show, show you a couple of things. What is in your slideshow, I'm going to come back here, and I didn't make a, um, I didn't make a slide for this, but I want to show you a couple of things. This little plus beside where it says background, kind of in the middle of the screen, children can click on the name of one of the person's slides in their group, and they can comment on them. Like, Sally, oh my goodness, I've never read that piece. Or when I read the chapter, I didn't even think about my drum. But now that I think about it, my passion is this. They can comment on each other's slides. So you, it's another opportunity to teach digital citizenship and feedback and comments. So I love this piece because you have control and you can also find the history. If you look under file, right in the middle, version history, you can find who said what when. And so you can you can give them feedback. If they didn't make a good choice, you can give them another opportunity to be successful with being, like, commenting on their peers' slides. That's kind of cool. But if you would like to tweet this image out to the world and share it with the author of this book, you just go to download as JPEG image current slide. And when you do that, it will save it onto your downloads. And then from there, you will tweet it out. I love to tell kids to tag the author and be sure and include the title. And, and many, many times we've done this in our different schools, and the author has commented back. We've even had GHO visits from authors based off of book, book snaps. And so it's just been a lot of fun to see all this global interaction and for children to know that these authors are real people. And they really care about what they think about the book. Another piece that has been super exciting is we have started this thing called Gratitude Snaps. My friend Tish and I, sorry, I have Gratitude Snaps. I'll show you the slide in just a few minutes. But you would create it exactly like you create this, but instead you're snapping a picture of something that you're grateful for. Or you can pull images off of Google and share why you're grateful. And you could fill them out and you can create them just like this. Or you can use Snapchat. And I'll show you how to get to my resources and videos for book snaps. So on my website, taraandmartin.com, you will go to resources. On the far left side of that resources box is all of your book snaps, book snaps needs. Uh, Gratitude Snaps sits in here as well. So the top one is the original blog for BookSnaps. BookSnaps was created in 2016, August 2016. It was that crazy idea I told you about at the onset. Tweeted it out. Dave Burgess, the author of the book I just showed you, is the one who I guess blogged for and got a lot of eyes on BookSnaps. And that's why it's now in 12 different countries. There are 12 different countries using BookSnaps with their students. The second link down is how-to videos. This is where I said I made many how-to videos with multiple different apps, not just Snapchat. So it could be access for all. But the uh, strategy for reading comprehension and using this 21st century digital highlighter is for everyone. So there you can find how-to videos, vlogs, and presentations about book snaps. Underneath that is a new, a new link that I've recently added, book snaps infographics. Some people don't want to watch a video. They just want a key or a glossary of what each symbol and which, what app has what. So you will see things like this, the Snapchat app guide. It tells you what each symbol means within the app. So you'll know which to push when you're trying to create your book snap or gratitude snap. There's one for Google Drawing and Google Slides. Like I said, they work much the same. Google Drawing is one image. Google Slides, you can have a collaborative book snaps gallery. On Google Slides, you can also go to presentation mode and run that presentation of book snaps for your parent-teacher conferences, for things like that, for other people to see the slideshow just steady running. I didn't show you that earlier, but I think that's really cool. The next link down is book snaps story and sharing, uh, sharing and storytelling. So Google Slides is one way to storytell. Another way is using Padlet, or there are lots of people that use Adobe Spark apps for sharing and telling stories with their book snaps. There are so many ways, Flipgrid, there are many different app smash activities you can use. 
to Storytell with your book snap. So I would invite you guys to join our Gratitude Snap Challenge. It started a couple of days ago. You're just four days in. Um, it's never too late to be grateful. But basically, it would give you practice for making book snaps, but you would be making them based off of something that you are grateful for. Tweet it out to the hashtag Gratitude Snaps and tag my buddy Tish Richmond, Tisha Richmond, or myself. And we will be sure and show you lots of love. The hashtag is gaining a lot of momentum with the month of November. And this challenge will be going through November 23rd. So thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. I can't wait to see more book snaps coming from you guys. Be sure and tag me. And if your students use them, be sure and tag book snaps and tag me. And I will make sure to show them lots of love and comment on the book snap. So thank you so much. Thanks, Kara. I think people learned a lot about what the book snaps are and gratitude snaps. Um, I did capture a question that somebody in chat tried to answer, but I wanted to ask it. Uh, does anyone know if the Bitmoji extension is safe for school? This teacher can't open it up for use unless she can say yes. Um, safe for school, you mean like appropriate uh, right. content? I think so. Okay. No, I think so. no, it has, an, it has inappropriate content. So okay. either if you use it in school, you would have to use it as a digital citizenship opportunity, which we do uh -huh. in our middle school and our high schools. But uh -huh. for our elementary, we do not use Bitmoji. Uh -huh. OK. Does anyone else have a question for Tara? Oh, are there others that are appropriate for younger kids? No, Susie, I so I so wish there was a Bitmoji appropriate for younger kids. So if any of you guys out there listening want to create one, I think that would be a stellar thing to create. Um, I've actually considered it myself just because the emotions are so fun to use. Mm -hmm. And a, a simple avatar does not do the same. It just doesn't mm -hmm. seem to feel the same. So right. typically for our younger kids, we go to um, emojis. Since Bitmoji won't, doesn't mm -hmm. always work out. OK. Any other questions for Tara since she does have to leave? I'm going to try to scroll through and see if I saw some. That's an idea, Paul. You could have students create a folder of Bitmojis they create using Google Drawing. You could. And you could. There have been some teachers that have created a folder of Bitmojis for all their students. That is, that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And they, they created one for each of their students. The problem with the little people is the Bitmoji doesn't even look like them. That's why I think there really needs to be a kid one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope there will be a kid one out there. How are teachers sharing book snaps in Flipgrid? OK, so in Flipgrid, I just recently, you know what, I'll tag uh, my friend Michelle. I met her at the Q conference last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, she tried to sma she ma app smash book snaps in Flipgrid. What I'll do is I'll tweet it out, and I'll um, tag this. I'll tag Peggy. And maybe she can get it into your feed. But you can mm -hmm. see her kids using um, Flipgrid and BookSnap. They basically post their BookSnap in a video explaining why they chose that one. And Susie's going to be sharing that with us, or at least on a slide. She's going to share an example, yes. but we don't know how, how it was done. Any other questions okay. for Tara? Nope, that's it. That looks like it. Again, thanks so much for sharing you. with us today. Certainly. Thank you so much. OK, Susie, you can take over. OK. Well, um, we're so happy that we had Tara because she really has started a movement. So we have found it's kind of interesting. If you just go to Twitter and you search with the hashtag BookSnap, it's amazing what you'll find. And I did find, I did capture a few, and I contacted some people and said, could we include this in the webinar? And that includes Michelle with the Flipgrid. But we also thought that this would be a time that um, anybody that would like to share, is there anybody who would like to raise their hand and share 
if they've used something like this or you have any other comments before we go on. I don't see a flurry of hands. <laughs> Well, well, we'll go on then, and we'll still have some more time. All right. So this is Michelle Wagner, and this is who um, Tara was just talking about. And Michelle used several apps together. So she used BookSnaps with HyperDocs, recorded them in Screencastify, and then uploaded them to Flipgrid. And she did this as part of the Global Read Aloud. Talk about multitasking. So she has shared with you, and I'll try and show you this in web tour in just a second. She has shared with us those videos. So she was using the book, The Wild Robot. And she gave me permission to share this. So I'm going to try and go to web tour. Um, I think the part when Roz was getting attacked by the bears and Bright Bill flew in and helped her. I think this was, like, really good of Bright Bill because even though she's not his biological mother, he still defends and helps her. I'm actually happy that Ross didn't die, but I'm happy that Bright Bill came to the rescue. Because the bears could have done some serious damage to Roz. She's not like a living thing, but if she gets dented or her arm falls off, she doesn't heal herself like humans and animals do. She needs, like, someone to rebuild her, and no one can do that. So, good thing that she didn't get damaged, and Bright Bill just came in and saved the day. So this is my book stamp on the wild robot. So yeah, right here it says in the book stamp. I like how Bright Bill has emotions and and it makes me feel nice because it means that Bright Bill cares about Ross. On this, on the book stamp right here, it says it says you think soft, Bright Bill. What if you're wrong? What if you wake up different? What if you never wake up? Mama, I don't want you to shut down. Right here, I put. The sun up here, I put um emoji of how I feel. I put bright bill with a teardrop, and then and it says I don't want you to shut down. And Roz is reaching for the button, and and she says okay I won't. So yeah, I really like this this book so. I picked the part in the wild robot when, in chapter 43, when Bright Bill flies away because he wanted to see the dead robots, but Roz didn't let him. When Bright Bill started to fly away, I got super worried because if my son just flew away, I would have no idea where he is going. I would also be sad because Bright Bill just started flying, and what if he got hurt? I am sure Roz is sad too because it is her son and she loves him very much. On page 129 of chapter 43, the sentence says, Without thinking, he sprinted toward the pond, beat his wings, and flew away. Thank you. I asked in a Facebook group, 
for teachers to share examples of book snaps. And what's interesting is, yes, teachers are using them with students, but a lot of teachers and educators are using them for themselves. So I've seen many times on Twitter, for example, where teachers are doing this with their professional learning books. So this was one teacher that shared with me. This is Vinya, and she also does a word of the day, and she puts that on display. And just think about it. How much more likely are the students to um, look at the word of the day and engage with the word of the day and remember it because of the bitmojis that she used with it? So this is kind of a creative way that she used that. Now we want to show the live binder because um, there are so many great resources in that. So this is the first uh, first uh, webinar of the month, so this is it's real easy to find. I wanted to point out some of these because they are exceptional. And we have several of the links and ways to follow Tara. And as besides all of the things things along the top, she has other, she has many other apps. So for example, people are using Instagram. As she mentioned, people are using Google Drawings. Well, guess what? Teachers are also using Seesaw. They're using Buncee. So there are all these different kinds and they keep, she keeps adding as well. Here are the infographics that she talked about that you could use this. A, a student might be more comfortable if they had this beside them. Here's the gratitude snaps. And she talks about the reason behind that. Then we even have dig sit snaps about digital citizenship. And you know, as we said, you need to we need to integrate that. Uh, all along. So this is another teacher who is inspired by that. We mentioned Dave Burgess before. Uh, here's a teacher that I found um, she has, um, Jolie has excellent things on HyperDocs. And as I was looking through her page, and she presented recently at MassQ, she uh, has some great resources for things like book snaps and uh, HyperDocs. So her things would be uh, very useful to look at as well. Here's the seesaw. And you can see that Tara has, um, she has video directions for all of these things. And the one I really wanted to show, and of course now I can't remember where it is, right here. This is by Jennifer Casa Todd. And we had her on because she wrote the book Social Media. And this is a great piece. If somebody says, I can't believe that you're using Snapchat in school, or I can't believe that you're doing this, she has great reasoning here to explain how doing book snaps is a form of close reading. Now, how much more likely would a student be to uh, want to go back and closely annotate text if they were just doing it with like a simple highlighter. Um, but the, as they are going through and creating their book snap, they're looking for the most important things. They're putting them in context. They're possibly making connections with other things. And making book snaps is a form of close reading. So I really love this piece by Jennifer Casatod. And here's another example from Rochelle about uh, people being wrong about uh, social media's use and how it can be very useful. And here is a podcast interview with Tara. As you can see, Peggy makes these extensive live binders, and I think too many times we don't take advantage of them. So there are many, many great resources in here. And here's an example I really like. These were book snaps from Matt Miller's Ditch That Textbook. And I really would encourage you to uh, try the Bitmoji. Um, I recently had to come up with a picture of myself for something for a meeting. And I said, I don't have a photograph I wanted to use. And they said, well, do you have an avatar? And I said, oh, sure. So I made a Bitmoji. <laughs> so it's a great thing to explore for us.
Susie, I was thinking, how about if I hop on an application share what's under that Classroom 2.0 Live Resources tab in the Live Binder? Yeah, please do, because you know it better than anyone else. <laughs> Let me get to it. OK, are you seeing my screen now? This tab is always here. You see how we have Tara Martin selected here? Well, I'm going to close that one. And look here. There's another tab. And it's always in every live binder. And you can find everything you need, I think, to learn about Classroom 2 Live. So if you want a tutorial, maybe you want to introduce um, our webinars to your teachers. We'll take them to this link in any live binder and show them the introductory video. Patty Ruffing created this for us. And it's terrific. And it shows you step by step exactly how to log in and how to participate in the session. It also shows you the page for the archives and resources. And there's a little video tutorial that tells you how to find that and how it works. It shows you our calendar, another video tutorial. So every one of those are video tutorials. There is also a link to the survey for requesting a PD certificate. Now, I do put that in every single live binder for each show, because I want to make it really easy for you to find that. But if you forget, can't find it, whatever, it's always going to be under the Classroom 2.0 Live resources. Did you know that we have Digo bookmarks for Classroom 2.0 Live? And you guys can add to those bookmarks. It's a group site where anyone who uses that hashtag can add it to the Digo bookmarks. So do that. That looks like Susie did the last sharing there. <laughs> so that's great. Um, also, um, there are links in there for Classroom 2.0 Live on Twitter. So if you follow us on Twitter, you can also follow us right there in the tab. And I don't know if you knew, but you can embed Twitter feeds right in a live binder. So they're live. You don't just have to click on the link, but you can just scroll down the the tab and everything is live right there and then if you wanted to go to one of those you could click on it so those are just a few of the things there is an app oh that one doesn't come up i need to check on that that's an um apple um icon um for subscribing to us on itunes you you can also subscribe on um uh, YouTube and get our videos that way, in addition to watching them in the archives. So that's just a quick browse through, but I hope you'll check those out and see what we've got there. And I'm going to close out of that and now take us right back because I want to tell you about our upcoming. Oh, Sherry, I didn't see your question while I was in there. How to find a resource in the archives. Oh. I'll go back and do that because that's one thing that isn't awesome about um, the categories in um, Weebly. <laughs> I was drawing a blank. I was thinking Live Finders, but it's in Weebly. So um, I'm going to go to just the archives and resources um, page and each week we add the show from the previous show so right now it's showing edumatch uh, which was sarah thomas's show last week so this is what you'll see when you go to archives and resources you can always search we have a a google um, custom search engine right there um, at the top of the page if you're not sure and you know that's the fastest way to find it anyway. So let me put in Jennifer Casa Todd and do a search there and show you how easy it is to find it. And it will only search on our site, but it'll show you every time her name has been brought up in one of our sessions. And then you can just click on that link and 
go directly to it. So this particular one, which came up first, would have taken you directly to her um, her um, archive recording. Now, all the way down. <clears throat> By the way, there's a link there where you can go and look at the archives of all of our live binders in one place. That may be something you'd like to do. But if you scroll down that page further, you're going to see a bunch of categories. This is what Weebly doesn't do well here. Um, you have to enter the categories that you want to use. It's like giving a hashtag or a tag to each show. So it's a very, very, very long list. But it is in alphabetical order. So if you wanted, for example, to see uh, what Alice Keeler did, you can just click on her name, and that will take you to her webinar. And if she did more than one, it will take you to all of them. I think that she just did one for us. Um, so you scroll down, find what you're looking for in alphabetical order. The author or presenter's name will always be there, and also their topic will be there. So um, we had some great webinars on donors choose, and the most recent one was just in September. Well, if you click on the donors choose category, you're going to see all of the webinars that we've had for donors choose. Um, Asia Jones did a great one on grant writing, <laughs> and um, it covered more than donors choose, but that was a great webinar. So that's, that's how you use those. You can also, if you remember which month it was in, you can go, I'm scrolling fast, so I know I'm making you dizzy, but you can scroll all the way down to the monthly archives. So if you knew it was a show that you saw last month, you could actually click on October archives, and then you would see just those. So that's a little unwieldy. So that's why I say I think that using the Google search custom engine at the top of the page is the best, fastest way to find what you might be looking for. And I didn't see, did, were there any other questions, Laura, Laura, that came up while I was in app sharing? No, not about the live finder. OK. <laughs> All right, well, I hope that gives you a little enlightenment, and that'll be in the recording, too, so that'll be great. So uh, people that aren't familiar with that will have a chance to learn more about the Live Binder and how to navigate that as well as our archives. So we hope you'll come back every Saturday to join us. We have some awesome shows every single week. Next week, we're going to be hearing from an amazing librarian, Tiffany Whitehead, is going to be sharing how to teach our students students about fake news, and she is a guru with that. Also, November 18th, we have an awesome show with Abby Fattrell and Nancy Mangum, both outstanding presenters, and they're going to be sharing some of their strategies and resources for coaching fellow teachers. We won't have a show on Thanksgiving weekend in the U.S. I know that isn't Thanksgiving for everyone, but too many people are with their families that day, including us, so we won't have a show then. But December 2nd, Stephen Anderson is going to be, an, be doing another webinar for us. He's done quite a few, and they're always excellent. And he's going to be doing how to create accessible digital content for everyone. I know that will be great. And then we're going to have the awesome, amazing Shannon Miller joining us on December 9th to share all of the amazing things she does with Buncy. And she is amazing, not only with Buncy, but with everything. But that's going to be a great webinar. So come back and join us for any that you can. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Harkadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar. And if you choose a webinar session there, um, as long as it's open to the public, your session is free. You can nominate a featured teacher by going to this link. You can also, if you are current, well, you don't even have to be a
current teacher, I don't think, you can nominate you nominate yourself as a featured teacher of the month as well, as well as nominating somebody else. As Peggy mentioned, the video collections on iTunes U, and here's a direct link for that. As you exit the session, the survey link should open. And you can also take the link from the chat or from within the live binder, either in the classroom 2.0 live resources area or within the, that particular show's resources. At the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. And please use a personal email address to request this. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks to our special guest, Tara Martin and to Susie Higley, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate and our webinar platform, to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for, for coming.